going to do some hoof evaluations. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the forum. I'm just going to tell you how I do a hoof evaluation. Now, I wanted to do some evaluations where you could join in. There was supposed to be a deal where you could click on people's names. They could join in with, you know what? Uh, don't worry if you couldn't change your name. It's no big deal. Don't even worry about it. Okay, there's somebody's horse. Hey, here we are at the class registration. I want to do Louise. Is that okay with you, Louise? Okay, so I'm going to find your horse, and we're going to do an evaluation on your horse, Louise and Smokey. How our stories are so similar. And you know what? We're just the tip of the iceberg. Because after the whole gamut of barefoot trimming and people are coming out of it, 10 years after the fact, giving up, finding out their horses are lame or unsound or dead, that's because all we've all gone through the same thing. We were looking for answers when we got into it. Okay, so I'm going to read your story. And uh, then we're going to look at your horse's feet. And Louise says, Smokey is a Missouri fox trotter that I purchased 11 years ago. I chose him because he was four years old, green broke, never shod, never stalled, and never fed grain. Also, I thought his sire was one of the most beautiful horses I had ever seen. He had really great feet that were truly rock crunching. Now he doesn't. Shortly after I got him, gosh, this almost makes me want to cry. <laughs> really, everybody's story makes me want to cry. My story makes me want to cry. Except, you know what? We're going to have victory now. Shortly after I got him, I started trimming him myself. I got lessons following Pete Ramey's method. Smokey lives outside with other horses 24-7 in the Rocky Mountains. They're fed local hay, that good Timothy hay, I'm thinking. Free choice, but with a nibble net and pasture. He is supplemented with California Trace, boron, iodine, and magnesium. Well, that's awesome, you know. And you know what? It's really amazing. You would think where he lives and the food he gets and everything, you would think that he would just have these amazing feet. But. What I have learned is a horse can be on even a crappy diet, but if he gets a good trim, he's got good feet. But if we trim the heels out, like we're all, and, and some of us weren't really taught to trim the heels out. Look at this picture here. We weren't taught to trim the heels out, but just back to the base of the frog, and you wind up trimming them out. So we were taught to what? Leave the toe. Don't touch the toe callus. Well, maybe Louise wasn't taught that, you know, but a lot of us were taught that. And then take the heel. See, how much sense did that make? You wind up with a negative palmer angle. So this is Smokey's feet. And as you can see, he looks like he is long in the toe. All right. If you were just looking at this feet right off the bat, would you think Smokey was long in the toe? But, and he might have a little excess toe here, okay, but that's just because his horn tubules are run forward like this here. I'm going to, uh, was that when the heels are not correct back here, it makes the toe look long. And another thing is that when you, when you hit, trim the heels out, you put all the horn tubules on a lower angled slant and these horn tubules, see them here? They push the toe forward. So you can work on that toe and work on that toe and work on that toe to try and get it back correctly. Now, now he does have some length of toe a little bit, but it's more horizontal like this than it is like this, really. These horn tubules right here all grow forward when the heel is, is trimmed out and push the toe forward. Now, can you see how that would be? Can everybody see the horn tubules and the direction they're going and where they start up here and where they end down here? See, this is the first thing you have to look at. When you're looking at these feet like this, what are the horn tubules doing? When the heels are not right, like when you just 
look at this foot. Like right away, the heel does not look short, does it? But it is. So you can tell too by how this is going, kind of see how it goes like this and then it goes down like that. That is always a sign that some of the heel buttress is trimmed out. The thing about it is you go to grow the heels on this horse without addressing these horn tubules and you're not going to get anywhere. All right. You have to address these horn tubules and you have to get them to move back. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of my horse, how I got the horn tubules to move back on him. We really have to get to know. It's just like a house. The hoof has a structure just like a house. You know how when they come in to build a house, they put up a frame, right? Okay, well, these horn tubules are like the frame, and they have to be a specific way. Okay, this is one thing that goes on. Okay, now, now you know, on... On Louisa's horse. Now the horn. Now look here. Here's the inner foot, right? Here's the lamina lines. The start up here at the coronary band. Remember, one little piece of wall starts here, connects to the lamina, comes down here, connects with a specific spot in the sole. They marry and travel to the ground. So this would be about how this should be on this horse. But this is how he used to be. Now look where this section of wall is growing to and see what it does to the sole. It's going to push the sole out of alignment here. Okay, so what you want to do, Louise, is you're going to want to work with this toe and these horn tubules to get them to come back. Here is an example. Uh, here's that same foot, same feet. Here's the, here, this I did on the heel here. But it would be the same for this section of wall up here. Okay, now notice how on the heel, as the heel came back, how the excess length came back as well. And as it was coming back, I had to trim it off. I had to consistently be trimming the side of this foot as those horn tubules were coming back so that there would be room and they would all move back. Yeah, you see this piece of hoof wall, let's go back here. Look at the size difference and the length. Look at the length difference. When it gets grown forward like that, you have too much wall in the capsule. Now, isn't that amazing, really? That you can even grow it back and get all that excess wall out of the capsule. Look, it's this this hoof isn't really any bigger, is it? They're both like height wise about the same. Is not that correct? This piece of hoof wall. Now, do you see why this here would keep your toe forward, keep it from coming back all the way correctly? This piece here is going to hold that dorsal wall forward right here just enough so you just never get that toe back. You have to read these tubules because again, how are the tubules supposed to be? They're supposed to be in alignment with how this lamina is here. Starts here, ends at a specific spot here. Each one has its specific spot, and that's the structure frame of your hoof capsule. So this is like collapsed and grown forward and too much hoof capsule in here. And so this is always going to be pushing up here. But guess what? It's always going to be pushing back here. You've got to figure out what is the mechanics? What is the, what are the leverages that are going on? Because look, we know that the foot is independent. We're going to look at some more pictures of her horse's feet. Now there's the heels. Okay. Now here's the thing too. When the heel buttress isn't right. And when all those horn tubules are grown forward, then the hoof wall is unstable. Those two buttresses on the side of those heels stabilize this whole hoof wall. You have this big, heavy horse inside there. When that hoof wall is not stabilized, he'll kind of move around all over in there. Now you can see here, right here, her pillars, right? Well, they're long, just like we were looking at, and they're pushing down this way. So naturally, 
everything's going to jam up here. See, see how that's raised right there? Okay, what are we looking at here? We're looking at the hoof well grid. Always got to look at that. Now, can anybody tell me from watching the three trims, Louise, did you watch the three trims several times on the one foot? Oh, one time. Can anybody tell me what you might do to this pillar right here that I showed you in the video where I trimmed the horse three times? Remember, there was one time I did the beveling a little different because I was addressing the sides of the toe. Bevel the pillars to encourage the wall to let down. Bevel at an angle, 45 degree bevel. And where do we bevel it back to? White line, exactly. Okay, now you have to make sure that you map the foot and use the mapping to tell you where the pillar is. Because I can't remember, I did a markup for somebody today who had marked the dorsal wall and they were getting ready to trim the pillars, but then there was a big storm and they couldn't. But when I looked at how they'd marked the dorsal wall, it was wrong. They would have they would have trimmed just right here and right here instead of clear over here where you need to trim and over here. See what I'm saying? So you have to do the mapping, Louise says. She says, bevel in the pillar. I have been doing that, but beveling to quarter inch less than center. So we're going to take this sole picture and put it in paint. I'm going to show you what I mean. So we're going to map this foot. So remember, what do we do first? We come down the center so we can use our little protractor thing. Get right. Then we measure. Now this toad, this does look a bit long here. And then we find the true apex of the frog, which is right here. Okay, I want to read what Debbie said here. She said, but I think when you need the pillars to let down, you need to bevel the pillars and leave the toe flatter so the horse isn't so. That is exactly correct. And what I want to talk to you about is alternate beveling. And Shandy asks, I think like I ask where you mark your hoof wall and I ask when you mark the wall is the point on the wall where you bevel to your angle wise where you take the sole to yes it is now you're going to measure then from here up you're going to measure an inch and a half it looks like your toe is lots long as well so you're going to measure an inch and a half because this what was he a tennessee walker okay he's a he's your regular size saddle horse this isn't a big huge warm blood or anything an inch and a half is a very safe distance to where the wall would end, like you see up here where the wall ends, ultimately might be about two inches, but to the where the white line should end is an inch and a half. So you're going to come in here, you're going to do about an inch and a half here. We'll make it just a little longer. Then you're going to, the first time, of course, you know, you the regular beveling, you took the toe back to the white line here all the way across. Square here on the sides. And then you also took the quarters. Okay, we're going to just use that as our inch and a half. Because remember, then we measure an inch and a half back this way and make a line here. And then you're going to do your bars. That's from right here at the side of the frog back into here, right about to here and back to here. Let's just do that. Don't follow a distorted bar, though. Like I've noticed people, if their bar is distorted and out like this, they're following it out like that. So you're mapping your foot like that. Okay. Bring that mapping line in and then make the bar follow you so that you pretty much right about here. The first time, as I said, you're going to come in and you're going to rasp this toe back all the way to that white line straight across 45 degree angle don't be afraid get her back there so you're saying from here to here is 1.5 inches to your green lines oh okay so the foot was a little long okay well look at me i'm a good guesser aren't i we're gonna trim this the first time 
And then we just take this down about to the level of the soul. We don't do it at an angle. These are the pillars right here. And you know that this is the same because I'm going to get that other picture of her foot and I'm going to put it here next to this foot so you can compare and you can see what we'll be trimming on that picture of the side foot oh, into our other picture. Um, because we never, ever do an evaluation just on the soul. Uh, did anybody else besides me notice how when people would, these experts would do markups for you, it was only the soul. They never looked at anything else on the foot. Let me tell you what, the soul can look the same no matter how messed up your horse's foot is. Can you kind of see what I'm doing here? Okay, now remember... Remember this piece of hoof wall that was grown way forward here? Now, let me kind of start over on your rasping. Now, so you first time you're going to come in here, you're going to take the toe back. You're going to rasp these flat. This is a 45 degree angle. Then you're going to come in here, okay? And you're going to do this at a 45 degree angle too. Okay, and then your heels flat down to uh, where you have mapped them and marked them. Remember, if they're not two inches, you leave them, right? And if they're longer than two inches, you mark them and you trim them down to that. And your rasp goes this way and this way. You never go back. Then you're going to bring this wall back to the white water line here. And here and just gently blend kind of blend this in a little bit, but not totally change the bevel You understand again the reason for why we do this this trim is Okay, so you see how that's gonna make a little room there for anything here that needs to come back All right, so that is what you do uh, Maybe your first trim, but then again uh, You might you ought to let's do it the other way. You've done that trim you come back and your bevel has grown out of the foot. Then what you do is you come in here. Let's say a week later you come out and the bevel is almost out totally here and totally in the quarters. Well, that's a good time to do the pillars here. You're, all you're going to do, you're going to come in here and you're going to rasp a 45 degree angle right here. Clear into the white line all the way to here. Now, here's the thing. Because it's at an angle, even though it looks kind of, it's, it won't look quite that severe, even though it's at an angle, because it's at an angle, you still have inner wall supporting the sole here. Come in here to the white line and do a total 45 degree bevel clear to into the white line and then you might just kind of round this off just a little tad you know just kind of in here just a little teeny bit and then you're gonna you know when you do that remember you make a sharp edge when you have that bevel so you're gonna want to take your small teeth and just kind of lightly round that out out there if you do that no it, it actually won't i mean it might for a little bit, but you've got your toe guarding it here, and you've still got some wall here, but you can't really see it. But because what's going to happen, Louise, is as soon as you give this wall here room, just right here, it's going to move, and it's going to come down, and within several days, you're not going to have a bevel there anymore. Because what you're doing is you're correcting. Let's look at let's look at the front of this foot. You see how the wall is up like that? You see how this hair is pushed up like that? As soon as you do this bevel, that is going to allow this wall to slide down. My horse started doing this on him. His feet or his feet are pretty relatively decent, but I I mean do it and see. That's what I've been doing. Some other people have been doing, and it's working well. You have to get these pillars to drop down and come back. And unless you give them room here, they're not going to do that. 
to alternate to kind of get that foot to moving? I don't have all the answers. What I do have is some of the answers. And what I hope to do is lay a foundation in the understanding of how this works. And as you guys apply this and experiment with this, you'll be the ones that will perfect this trim by your research, your study, your application to the horse's foot. I may have started this, but I can't finish it. Only all of us together, working together as a team, can finish this. And so we all get credit for what is going on here. So on Louise's horse, Okay, Louise, you're going to want to get them pillars corrected, and that way your hairline will relax here, and it'll start, the wall will start coming back. Remember we, when we started this, I was telling you about the pillars, or about the horn tubules here, and how they were long and forward and keeping the toe forward. So let's look at those right here. So this one goes to here, and this one goes to here. See that? See how we're right in here? So what you're going to be doing by beveling this up here, I want to address this situation where you said, Louise, that if you do that, he'll be walking on his soul. Well, the thing about the soul is, remember the picture I showed you about how when the wall is forward, the soul is not in the correct place anyway, and you're going to have thin souls. But as soon as you get start getting this corrected and getting this Okay, it's right here. If it came back, look how long it would be. Okay, what's going to happen is uh, this is all going to drop down and, and you're going to trim it off as it's moving back. It's going to be right about here. And it's going to bring soul back with it. And then you're going to have some soul here in the bottom of your foot. See, and this one here is going to come back like that. That's what needs to happen. In order for it to happen, things aren't going to be ideal. Yeah, there's going to be some soul there because his soul is not right anyway. Yeah, his soul is stretched out and flat and thin. When this whole foot comes together, you, you're going to have really dynamic foot on this horse. Yeah, now look here. Look how that's right there. Is that cool or what? See how that works? See the mechanics of the structure of this whole situation going on here? So that's going to come back, but it's only going to come back so far. And what's going to happen? It's going to run into this right here. It's going to run into the wall right here. So the next time, what are you going to do? You're going to bevel the quarter. And what's that going to do? It's going to give this here room to move back a little bit so then you might do that a few times and that's going to come back and be good and then you're going to come in here and you're going to bevel this again and it's and now it has a little room to move back a little further yeah this alternate beveling okay is allowing different parts of the hearth to move and then what's going to happen to this toe by George, this old toe here, she's going to start coming back too. In the meanwhile, you're building up this portion of the foot back here. This is kind of coming up a little bit and building up. And these are going to be coming back here too and straightening up. And you're just bringing this whole foot back into alignment. All these horn tubules back and to the correct alignment with lamina. So this is going to be really exciting. Louise, to see your horse's feet taking shape. He'll have pretty steep dorsal walls. You know, I can look, look at folks. You see this at the line where it goes into the coronary band that's right behind here. And you can tell how steep this horse's dorsal wall is going to be. See that right there? But then right about here, it goes out like that. Okay, so what I do is I come up here, right about there. Now look, see my line here? 
see the distance in between this line and the hoof wall? Now, as soon as that line touches right there, okay, right there, that's where this toe right here should be. And why can't it go there? Because this is there. That's why you got to work with this, get it to shorten up and go backwards so that this dorsal wall can be what it was supposed to be. Let's do that again. Okay, here we go. Okay, now as soon as my line, look up there towards the hairline where the coronary band would be behind the hook wall. As soon as I close right there, right there. How about that? This is where the dorsal wall is supposed to be. Not right here. It's supposed to be this steep and it's supposed to be back here. But it can't go back here. Why is that? Because these horn tubules have grown forward and are holding it forward. And why are these horn tubules grown forward and holding it forward? Because the heels were trimmed too low, which when you lower the heel, when you lower the heel, what's it do? Puts every, all these horn tubules. If I was to lower the, look, here's where the horn tubule is right now. If I was to lower the he heel, what would happen? The horn tubule would be lower still. See how that happens? Now look at the slant that put that on. If I were to lower the heel on this horse, that's going to lower this horn tubule right here to that angle. And what is happening? It's more horizontal. And how is it growing? It is growing forward, pushing forward, pushing forward. And so what's it going to do? It's going to push forward. It's going to push every horn tubule in front of it forward. Louise, can you see, see where your horse's wall should be there? See, anytime, anytime a horse's wall does this, something is wrong. Something's going on because their walls are supposed to be straight. See? Now, at some point, I need to tell you, show you also another way for determining where the true apex of the frog is. Um, it's just another way. It's not like, you know, written in stone or nothing. But sometimes when you get a horse with a frog, oh, hey, Louise, I know. I didn't know what to do either. Yeah, none of us knew what to do. And we were all led in the wrong direction. But now we're here together. We're going to uh, we're going to make an impact on the world by what we are doing here. This little group here, we will make an impact on the world. Because what we're going to do is we're going to prove if this is right. I have seen this work on my horse. And I can show you other examples. But we need to see it work on other horses. So that we can help people and help horses. Because there is some very atrocious, horrible things going on with horses out there and their feet. So, Louise. Okay, I want to talk to Louise now. Now, do you have any questions? Is there anything I can answer for you? Or do you think you're, you're prepared to start this? And um, have you done a full mapping on your horse's feet yet or anything like that? Okay, awesome. Um, do you have any questions about practicing this and about how you come out in several days? You're going to want to keep an eye on it. Really, it'd be great if you would keep a record of when you do this beveling, how long it takes for it to come out of the wall. You know, if you could just write a little diary on it or something, that'd be great. And then do the alternating beveling. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Alternating that beveling. Okay. So then is there anything else you want to ask, ask me? Or is there anything else I can help you with? So Louise says tomorrow I'll probably have lots. I will take this and post this on your page. This, met, this picture here. Okay. So now I'm going to go pick, pick another horse.